Hello and welcome to our webinar, um, Keeping Well for Health and Care Workers. Um, today we're going to be looking at preventing burnout. Um, it's so fantastic to see so many of you have signed up for our webinar today. So welcome. Um, we're really excited to be able to offer this series of webinars for you and um, thank you for taking the time out of your day, your busy day, to join us. My name is Emily Gardner and I'm a cognitive behavioural therapist working for the NHS in London and I've worked as a mental health professional for over 11 years and I'm trained to support people with anxiety and depression um, and particularly enjoy um, offering these webinars to you at the moment as well. So as we get started, um, it would be really helpful for you to know a little bit about the question and answer function. So um, if you have a look on the right hand side of your page, um, you can find the question mark little section on the right hand side and um, enter your name. If you do want to enter your name, if you could just put your first name in um, rather than your surname so that we can keep your um, information confidential. Um, so click on the anonymous, the blue arrow so that you can remain anonymous and then enter your question and click on the arrow to send it um, across. Um, so everything you write will not be published immediately. Um, we have moderators who review your questions or responses and then will publish them. And so it won't come up straight away. It will take a few moments. And we are unlikely to go be able to go through all questions. Um, we'll go through as many as we can, but it might not be possible to visit all of them. And wherever possible, um, if you can keep your details anonymous, that would be really useful. Um, so when we ask you to um, respond to a question, we want you to use this function or answer a poll, use this as well. Or if you have a question for us um, and you would like it to be private, then if you just put private at the front of the question and then type what you want to ask, then that will remain private with our moderators. Um, so you can ask anything you like. Um, if you are happy for other people to see your question, then just just type it in. OK, um, and just for your knowledge, these webinars are being recorded um, and they'll be up on the website, the Thrive London website um, for you to watch again um, afterwards, along with the slide deck as well. So we'd like to ask a question about where you work and what your role is. So using the question and answer function on the left hand side, just tell us a little bit about where you work and what your role is without telling us, I guess, too many specifics so we can identify who you are, but just to give us a flavour of what your role is. And we'll come back to those in a few moments. So I um, want to share a little bit about what these webinars are. So um, the they have been designed to help you to cope with the impact caused by the coronavirus and we're going to change the theme each week um, and focusing on different ways that your well-being may be impacted. Um, essentially each webinar will be focusing on understanding why you feel the way you feel and then on some strategies and techniques um, to help you to manage the way that you feel. So let's have a look at your answers and find out where you work and what your roles are. So I'm just going to have a quick look now and see. So um, occupational therapist working in community mental health, um, community disability team, OT, um, the medical directorate in London, um, East Kent speech and language therapist. Lovely. So we've got a, quite a range of different roles within um, health and care settings and um, so we have some more coming through community health foundation trust occupational therapist registered manager for learning disability team leader at day service for autistic adults so lovely a real wide range we have a cams practitioner as well working for the nhs so hopefully this webinar feels useful for you and um, you'll get some really useful things that you can use in your work um, so um what do you hope to get out of this webinar? Um, so this is, I guess, a question often asked in in um, presentations. And today we want to hear from you what your hopes are. Um, as 
um, it gives us an idea of what whether or not we're meeting those as well. And um, so please let us know in the question and answer and I'll come back to that in a few moments. So this series of webinars is designed to provide you with a toolkit of evidence based resources and ideas to help you in the next few okay. days or weeks it. or months. Um, and the, the content of these webinars is going to be based on cognitive behavioural therapy, which is a very effective treatment for depression and anxiety. And the idea behind it is that it, focus, it focuses on making changes to our thoughts and behaviour to improve our mood. In today's webinar, we're going to be looking specifically at quite a common cycle that can lead to burnout, and that is the boom and bust cycle. And then we're going to look at how we can break into that vicious cycle. So let's have a look at your responses and what you hope to get out of our webinar today. And so the first one to gain resources to support my mental health. Lovely. Any others? To gain information on how to manage anxiety as a frontline worker. And so both of these are really, really good hopes, I suppose. Um, and in, in response to the first one, resources to support my mental health, this webinar today is um, hopefully going to help you with that and um, the idea of it is that it it will and in terms of specifically managing anxiety and um, some of the things that we talk about today will help you with anxiety um, but next week's session is specifically focused on anxiety and um, so that will maybe more relevant to you but what we cover today will help you manage anxiety as well and to gain um, strategies to manage and cope with burnout. Absolutely, we're covering that today. So um, again, hopefully that will help you. OK. So um, another question for you before we get fully into the content of today's webinar. Um, what challenges have you faced since COVID-19? So what are some of the difficulties that you've been experiencing? Um, please share them with us on the question and answer. Um, all of us will be experiencing different challenges, but at the same time, there will be a crossover. And so it, it can be really helpful to um, share with each other some of these challenges. So please do that now and we'll come back to those in a few moments. So some common challenges that you may be experiencing um, as a result of the coronavirus, um, increased workload. Um, and this may be one of the biggest causes of burnout for you is that you are potentially being run ragged um, trying to look after people. And, and you're probably doing a fantastic job, but it's really tiring and exhausting. And on top of that, you may be experiencing limited healthcare resources, so um, a lack of PPE, or maybe you're concerned about that um, running out at some point. It may be that you're experiencing pressure to make some really difficult decisions um, that maybe you feel uncomfortable with or that you're struggling to, to cope with. Or maybe it's about some of the things you've witnessed or seen that have been quite distressing. Or it could be that because of the virus, you're living away from your family or your community and you don't have that same support network available to you. Or maybe you've been redeployed and you're working in a new and unfamiliar team. And that comes with many complications as it's a, such a big change. And maybe you're relearn, you're learning something new and, and working in a different way than normal. And, and that's going to be quite stressful. So all of these things naturally will have an impact on how we feel. And naturally, that's going to make us feel potentially anxious or stressed or even sad, angry or overwhelmed. And maybe you're feeling somewhat helpless. And I suppose the message that I want to share with you today is that it's OK to not feel OK. And the reason why you're feeling this way is because of what you've been going through and the me, me, um, the challenges that you're facing. And these are really normal responses to an extremely challenging situation. 
it's understandable that this pandemic is bringing up a roller coaster of emotions for you. Um, things might feel really uncertain and unpredictable. And you may feel like you don't have much control. So it's important to recognise that this is normal um, because of what we're going through. But it, you don't have to feel this way. And there are things you can do to improve the way you feel. And that's why we're here today is to help you identify what it is that's making you feel this way and what you can do to improve it a bit. Um, you may have noticed that you've had that adre adrenaline rush or maybe you've been running off adrenaline for a while. And now, because you've been doing that for so long, you have found you may be finding that you're running on empty. And everyone is different and everyone will be responding to these challenges differently. And it's important to recognise that that's OK. We can all respond differently. <clears throat> If you are really struggling right now, it's important that you don't try and cope all by yourself. Please seek help and seek support. And there are some fantastic organisations available to you. Um, so if you are having thoughts of suicide or self-harm, please reach out and don't just struggle alone. And um, the Samaritans are available at any day, any time, um, 24 seven, and they're free on 116123. However, there is another service that may be more useful for you um, or just as useful. Um, the Samaritans and the NHS are working together and have come up with a wellbeing support line for NHS staff and social workers and care workers. And this is available from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. And it's for, for you basically to help you to continue to look after other people. And so you can call them for free on 131 7000. So let's have a look at some of the challenges you've been experiencing. So I'll just have a look at those now. Adjusting to ongoing change. And um, yeah, there's been a lot of changes recently and, and it does take a bit of adjustment to manage those. Um, effectively working remotely, as much of work is now virtual. Um, it's very isolating and hard to keep home work life separate. We're going to be thinking a bit about that today, so hopefully that will help. Um, juggling home and work and care of in-laws we cannot be in physical contact with as they're shielding. Absolutely, that's going to be challenging. Um, uncomfortable work conditions, um, working from home in a flat share has been difficult. Absolutely. Um, brilliant. Thank you for your for sharing those. Um, and it sounds like some of those things have and are and will be really difficult to kind of deal with. And hopefully some of the things we explore today will be useful. So what is burnout? Um, well, it's an, a state of emotional, physical and mental exhaustion, and it's often caused by excessive and prolonged stress. Um, so it can occur when you feel particularly overwhelmed or emotionally drained and unable to meet the constant demands on you. Um, and as that stress continues, you can begin to lose interest and motivation lose the interest and motivation that led you to take on that role in the first place. Um, so the love of your job might be dwindling and that burnout reduces productivity um, and saps your energy, leaving you feeling really helpless, hopeless and potentially even cynical or resentful. Eventually, you may feel like you have nothing left to give. And the negative effects of burnout can spill out into different areas of our lives. So it can impact our home life um, as well as our work life and our social life. And it can cause long term impact as well on our physical health and um, well-being. So it's really important to identify burnout right away and to do something about it. So what are the signs and symptoms of burnout? And um, so um, we've created a bit of a, a five areas model, which is quite a common model that we use in cognitive behavioral therapy. And it's quite useful to help us to identify um, some of the things that are going on that make us feel the way we feel. So as you can see at the top, um, we have already talked about some of the challenges that we might be facing, increased workload or responsibility, limited resources, and distressing scenes, living away from family, working in a new and unfamiliar team. 
And those will feed into the kind of thoughts that we're having and the way that we interpret things. And over time, if we are starting to burn out, we may notice an increase in um, those thoughts around a sense of failure. So having thoughts like I'm a failure, I'm letting people down. Or we might be having self-doubting thoughts, you know, I'm not good enough or I can't cope. And that increasingly cynical outlook might look like, well, what's the point? And things are never going to change. And these thoughts will naturally impact on how we feel physically. And so we're going to feel more tired and drained. We might notice an increase in headaches or muscle pain or a loss in appetite or poor sleep and a loss of motivation. And so naturally, those physical symptoms will then have a knock on effect on what we do and how we behave. And so we may find that because of this, we're starting to withdraw from responsibilities or we might start isolating from others um, or procrastinate. So some of the things that we may be um, what well, we need to get done, we're putting off because we can't face them. Um, or we might start to drink more or comfort eat as a way of coping with what we're dealing with. And all of these things are going to have a knock on effect on how we feel. So we may find ourselves feeling really helpless and trapped, detached and frustrated. And then these emotions and behaviours are naturally going to have a knock on effect onto our thoughts. And so we can start to see this cycle escalating and we can get driven deeper and deeper into this vicious cycle. And it can feel really difficult to break. We can think about our capacity to cope a little bit like a stress bucket. Um, some of you may have heard this analogy before, but I think it's really useful to describe that process of, of stress and burnout. And so um, over time, the bucket slowly fills up when we experience different kind of stress. And when that water level is really low, it can feel fine. You know, it doesn't really matter what we face, we feel able to cope with it. And it doesn't matter how big or how small those challenges are, we we feel like we've, we've got it under control because there's plenty of room in our bucket. However, over time, as the water level starts to rise and it gets higher and higher and it starts to fill up to the brim, at this point, it can feel really overwhelming because it doesn't matter how big or how small that little drop, for instance, can make it overflow. And this can be where we feel like we're, you know, juggling so many things and we just don't know what we're going to drop. And this is the same with our, compa our capacity for stress. And when we feel overwhelmed, we can find really small things that we used to cope with easily, really overwhelming. It can be really helpful to think about um, what one of the causes of burnout could, can be. And, and this is um, when you put yourself in last. Um, and when we prioritise our needs, our own needs last, we can start to struggle. So often when we plan our busy schedules, we, we often tend to block in work and then parental responsibilities um, and then our housework and then bills. And then whatever time is left, we then do something for ourselves. So as you can see from this pie chart here, you know, the big pink section is work, purple is parental responsibilities, then the green is housework, the blue is bills and paperwork, and then the little tiny blue section is what we're left with. And sometimes there might not be any time left at all. And we can continue like this for a short amount of time, but over time, as we continue to put everything else first, and we neglect ourselves, we then become less able to cope with the things that we want to. And sometimes we may need to remind ourselves that we need to look after ourselves first in order to best look after other people. When we put ourselves into our lives first, we make time for ourselves, we prioritise our own needs so that we can continue to sustain and care for others without burning ourselves out or spreading ourselves too thin. We end up having more in our tank or bucket um, and we then have more energy, more sparkle and more to give. If we put ourselves into our lives last, then we're running on empty 
and we resent can start to resent helping people because we're exhausted and we feel underappreciated and slowly over time we can become bitter and we can stop helping and caring for others. So what we need to do is to create more capacity and um, we can look at this a little bit like we might look at sharpening a saw and by taking time out to sharpen the saw it prevents the edges of that saw from becoming blunt. So basically what this means is preserving and enhancing the greatest asset that you have and that is you. As you remind yourself to put yourself first you might feel guilty about this and it's important to remind yourself that you are your best asset and you can only function at your best if you look after yourself. Feeling good doesn't just happen. Living a life in balance means taking the necessary steps to renew yourself and it, it is up to you because no one else is going to do it for you. At the height of this pandemic this may not have been possible or easily done and a lot of this may have fallen by the wayside so some of the things that maybe you used to do that you found helpful and supportive maybe they've not been possible. And some of you may feel like that's still the case and you are still struggling with the amount of work you're having to do. And you may have feel may feel like that it's really difficult to carve out time for yourself, but it's even more important that you do, because if you don't find time to look after yourself, you're not going to be able to continue in the same capacity. Whereas if you do take time to sharpen the saw, you will then have time, you'll have more energy, you'll be more refreshed and rejuvenated. So it's worthwhile taking that time, even if it's small and small things can really make a difference. So um, just to give you a few ideas, here are some of your ideas from last week's webinar. Um, so um, we've kind of captured them all here because some of them, were, they, they were fantastic ideas. And so we wanted to share them with you. And um, so we have swimming um, having a glass of wine, um, swimming outdoors, meeting my family and friends, pampering myself and having a girly night, going for a drive, going for a cycle ride, going for regular walks at least four times a week and mindfulness, having a back massage by my partner and um, going for a walk in my local park each morning to feed the swans. I miss the swimming. If I miss the walk, it makes a huge difference and the work day is more stressful bath with essential oils and a hot tub, walking and running with my dog, going for regular walks at least four times a week and mindfulness and yoga. Some really great ideas that you shared, so thank you for that. So a little bit about um, a boom and bust cycle. So I just have a drink of water. So this is a common cycle that we might fall into and you might find that the impact of the coronavirus and an increase in workload and a lot of the challenges we've um, talked about today um, have increased the demands on your time and you're juggling a lot more than usual and and so if this is the case we can feel that our resources outweigh those demands that are placed on us sorry the demands outweigh our resources and this can cause us to feel like and to push ourselves even harder to try and meet those demands. And so you put yourselves under increasing amounts of pressure to be able to live up to the demands and expectations that you're being put under. And so you put you are achieving more and more. And we call this is the boom part of this cycle. However, over time, we can start to get worn out and our mood and energy crashes. And we then can struggle to get going again. And this is the bust part of the cycle. And then we might reduce our activity because we're exhausted. And we might start to avoid social activities or routine activities. And then because we're avoiding things and procrastinating because we're exhausted, we then can start to feel guilty and those pressures start to build again. And so then we set ourselves really high targets again and we push ourselves to get back to normal. But when we don't meet those targets, we can then feel really disappointed and exhausted, pushing ourselves into that low mood, lack of energy. And that cycle continues.
So um, when we're in a boom and bust cycle, it can look like this. So this up and down, up and down. So we have a really good day and then the next day we've crashed. Or it might be day to evening. So you're really working hard during your shift and you're pushing yourself. But then when you get home, you completely crash. Or maybe it's um, you push yourselves on your days where you're working and even when you get home, you're working till late. But then on your days off, you are just crashing and not doing very much. Um, and so over time, it's just a consistent up and down, up and down, up and down. And it can feel like a two, a one step forward, two steps back, as we can often feel like we're not achieving much. And when it comes to breaking this cycle, what we need to do is start to level out our level of activity so that um, on our good days, we hold ourselves back a little bit and on our bad days, we push ourselves a little bit more. And we can do this really gradually by increasing our activities and then build up to a more manageable level of activity that we can maintain over time. So how do we do this? Well, um, it can be really useful to use a technique called behavioural activation and it's a technique which has been designed to slowly build in those structured activities and it works by scheduling different types of activities um, making sure that you follow your plan and not your mood and um, so that we can actually complete those activities and not and break the cycle so why do we use this technique well a lot of research has shown it to be effective and it is the most effective treatment and recommended treatment for depression. And also it does not require you to concentrate for long periods of time or think too much. And well, we know that this can be a symptom of depression and low mood that people often tell us that they have problems with. So the first step is to make a list of activities that you want to start to build into your diary. So we divide them into different categories and we need to create a balance of these activities. So we have the routine and these are things that you do daily, your day to day routine. Um, you, the necessary things are activities that are often very important and have a consequence if they're not done. And then the pleasurable activities, which are things that you maybe used to do before you started to struggle with low mood or feel like you're overwhelmed or, or stressed. Um, things that maybe you used to really enjoy and used to um, make you feel better. Maybe your coping strategies that you um, used to use. Now, um, in order to maintain our well-being, we need to have a balance of these activities, much like a three-legged stool. If one of these areas is weaker, then we will be out of balance and our stool will topple over. So um, I have here some examples of routine, necessary and pleasurable activities for you to have a look at in the slide deck following today's webinar. And um, so we'll come, you can come back to that at another time. So the second step is to identify from the list um, and then I and rate the activities from easiest to the most difficult, making sure that you mix them up and include all routine, necessary and pleasurable activities. And it's important to think about how difficult it would be for you now rather than before when you were feeling much better and feeling able to cope with things. And so this way, what we are trying to do is think about building up slowly and starting with the easier activities. So the next step is to schedule the activities and we start with the easiest ones and then build our way up, working through to the difficult categories. However, if there is a necessary activity that you need to complete within a certain time, um, it may be that you need to schedule that activity anyway, um, but break it down into um, different stages. And also it's important to uh, give enough details um, when you are scheduling your activities and to, for instance, um, really spell out what the plan is. So a walk with the dog in the morning at 10 a.m. So be really specific when you are planning these activities. And then step four is to do them. So actually stick to the plan. Now this bit is key, is sticking to the plan rather than your mood. So 
Remembering it's a forward planning exercise. We're planning out our days to create that balance of activities and we don't want to be led by our mood, otherwise we'll get caught into that boom and bust cycle because our natural tendency is to follow our mood, but we need to resist and create a balance rather than be led by the way we feel. Finally, step five, and this step's really important, and that's to identify the activities you manage to do um, and include during the week. So we really need to review how we got on with it. So asking ourselves the following questions, how did completing these activities impact on my mood? What other activities could I schedule in the next week? And was it difficult? Did I manage some of them? Um, and what could you do to make that activity more achievable if you didn't manage to achieve it? And could you arrange for a family member or friend to help you or remind you? A good place to start looking after ourselves is by planning in some pleasurable activities. And these are often the activities that we tend to cut out when we are feeling stressed and overwhelmed. And it might be helpful for you if you're feeling particularly stressed at work is to choose activities that make you feel rejuvenated and refreshed at the end of a really difficult day. And um, so things like going on a walk or having a long hot bath with essential oils are fantastic ideas. However, some of the things that maybe you used to do and enjoy might not be possible because of the restrictions of um, lockdown. So things like visiting friends and family or going to the gym or going out for a meal. So it might feel like because you can't do those things that there's no point in doing anything. And giving into this is more likely to lead us back into that vicious cycle. So we need to be aware that this is how we will feel and do the opposite. And we really need to find things that bring us joy. So it may be thinking creatively and changing our, our idea of what brings us joy. Maybe those things that we used to do aren't possible now. So adjusting them is, is really important. And it may be really difficult to feel joyful right away, especially if you haven't felt joyful in a long time. So starting small is really key. So just doing something that gives you a small sense of pleasure or achievement. And if you're finding it hard to do this, really break it down. So let's have a look at some of your ideas. So um, using the question and answer function, if you could just share some of the ideas that maybe you've had already of things that um, bring you joy um, that you've maybe had to change because of lockdown. Maybe you've had to do things slightly differently. Um, so yeah, share those ideas and we'll come back to those in a few moments. Um, so um, I had a go at um, adapting some activities already. Um, and so these are maybe activities that you enjoyed previously, but the idea here is to teach you how to adapt our activities. So for instance, prior to lockdown, maybe you enjoyed going along to an art class. Obviously that's not possible right now. And so it's important to think about what I enjoyed about this activity. So for, for me, it might be painting and expressing myself creatively. So we don't necessarily need to attend a class to do that. We can buy some watercolours and paper and go somewhere inspiring to paint. Or maybe we have really enjoyed meeting up with friends and that's not possible. So it's worthwhile thinking, well, what exactly did I enjoy about this? Um, and for this, it was being able to connect with friends. So equally, you can send a letter or postcard or gift to a friend, letting them know that you're thinking of them. Or maybe you enjoyed going to an exercise class um, and that gave you an opportunity to exercise or stretch. So why not go for a brisk walk with some stretching at the beginning and at the end? So we don't have to necessarily make big changes to our things that we enjoy, but it's really key that we think about what we enjoyed about that activity and how we can still get that sense of enjoyment now, but doing something slightly different. So I have um, two examples of how I have been creative during lockdown. And um, so I love going out for meals, and this is something that we're all unable to do at the moment. 
Um, and I thought about what I enjoy about this activity. And um, there are two things. The first was spending time with my husband. And the second was being able to try new foods. Um, so once a week, my husband and I decided that we'd get our children to bed early and we would cook together something that we might order in a restaurant. Um, so we have to plan this in advance so that we have everything ready. And um, so we make sure we get the food shop with everything that we want. And we try and pick something that we've never cooked before. Um, and I really enjoy using fresh herbs in my cooking. So I took this as an opportunity to um, build a small herb garden on my windowsill. And we use these in our restaurant style meals um, just to add a little extra flavour. And we've really enjoyed this experience and we could have easily just said, oh, well, there's no point and um, we can't we can't go out for a meal. So we'll just um, have takeaways or um, just carry on cooking as normal. But actually, um, rather than seeing um, lockdown as an obstacle to our joy and fun, it's actually created something new that my husband and I really enjoy. And it's an opportunity for us to to do that together. And so it's something that we will continue even when lockdown finishes. Um, another idea, another thing that I have done, and so prior to lockdown, I quite enjoyed going to yoga classes. And as this hasn't been possible, um, I thought about how I could adapt to the limitations of lockdown. And I considered what I enjoyed about the exercise class. And it was firstly that I made sure that I went. So it was a commitment to go. Having paid for it and signed up, it made sure that I went. Um, but also the secondary um, benefit was connecting with other people. So I considered what I could do now um, within my limitations that give me those same benefits. And so I arranged to meet up with a friend for a socially distant walk. And um, so we walked fast enough that my heart was beating really fast and I was um, working up a bit of a sweat, but we could still talk and connect. And, um, and I was surprised by how much I really enjoyed this activity. Um, the views were beautiful and I even noticed the next day um, that I'd worked muscles I hadn't worked before. Um, so I learned never to underestimate walking because it was um, it gave me a lot of benefits. So let's have a look at some of your ideas and I'll come across to them now. So we have listening to music during commute to work. Brilliant. Baking a cake during the weekend using video conference call to spend time with family and friends. Brilliant. Um, I've, I've done this as well. And actually, it has felt like I've spent the evening with them. So it can be almost as good as face to face contact. Dinner with my dad via Zoom. Brilliant. Watching the Glastonbury coverage in a camping chair in my living room. Brilliant. Really creative. Um, instead of meeting friends, schedule weekly video calls with them instead. Brilliant. Dancing to music in my living room. Film night with my children rather than going to the cinema. Excellent. Um, I've seen um, I've seen some of my friends have done this. They've actually created um, a cinema with popcorn and tickets and everything. It's such a great idea. And um, we bought a treadmill in order for me to be able to continue to have a walk as um, this is something I love. But anxiety has made walking outside very stressful. Online yoga and meditation classes have been really enjoyable also. Absolutely brilliant. So been really creative there. Some great ideas. Thank you for sharing. So um, coming on to our last tip um, for managing and preventing burnout um, is exercise. And there is a reason why we are st were still allowed to go out for one hour of exercise at the peak of lockdown. And that is because it's one of the best things that we can do for our mental health. It helps us to condition our body to handle stress better. And it also increases the amount of serotonin our body produces. And it's been found to be as effective as medication for improving mood. And it doesn't just, it doesn't have to be going to the gym, putting on Lycra or um, gym kit, you know, it, it's just about doing a bit more exercise and getting out there and going on walks, as I said, is a fantastic start. If you are not sure that you can find the time, as I understand that you are probably very busy, 
um, it might be worthwhile thinking about how you can include it into your routine. So thinking about um, including it as part of your commute. So walking or cycling all if um, part of it or if not all of the way, um, if you can. Um, and this way you can actually build that into your into your day. If you're really struggling with motivation, especially after a difficult shift, um, it might be really hard to get moving and then just um, use the five minute rule. And this is basically where you uh, make yourself do something for just five minutes and then review it. So if after the five minutes you're really struggling and you're feeling exhausted, then you can give yourself permission to stop. However, you may find that you're feeling able to continue and your energy is building. And, and this is quite common um, with exercise in that it's actually energy producing. Um, so we may feel really tired and exhausted, but actually going out for some exercise um, for that walk or doing that yoga um, online can really boost your energy levels rather than make you feel more tired and exhausted. And also it prepares your body for sleep as well. Um, as long as it's not too late at night, if you do it a bit earlier on, um, then it will help you, your body feel more ready for sleep. So um, what do we do with all of this? So um, we've given you quite a few ideas today to think about, um, but the next thing for you is to put it into practice. And the first thing is to plan two to three smaller activities to do over the next week, which will help you to create more of a balance in your life. So go back through the slides and have a look at some of the things that you want to implement. So whether it's um, planning in those routine, pleasurable or necessary activities or um, <clears throat> some of those refreshing or rejuvenating creative ideas, or maybe it's putting um, planning in more exercise as well. So um, one of the things you can do is monitor what you're doing at the moment to help you identify um, whether or not you're in a boom and bust cycle, but also the balance of activities. So whether or not you have um, a balanced amount of routine, necessary and pleasurable activities. And as I said earlier, often we can find that we, um, because we're busy and overwhelmed, we tend to schedule out or avoid those pleasurable things, those things that give us a sense of meaning and enjoyment. And then our life can be left feeling really overwhelming and empty, even though we're really busy. And so, um, as you can see from this, um, this person is particularly busy, but on their days off, they are avoiding doing things and they're finding it hard to get going but then trying to make up for it in the evenings um, and and so this is very much a boom and bust cycle um, so I spend a bit of time looking at this later um, if you want to um, so we also have um, an example of scheduling a first week so this might be quite a lot but it was just to give you a bit of idea about what you can do um, so um, it's just making sure that you take breaks um, at lunch and um, you are entitled to your breaks. So even though you're really busy, it's important that you do take them. Um, and also adding in refreshing and rejuvenating activities after work rather than coming home and doing paperwork and bills and housework because you need to prepare yourself for the next day of a really um, busy day. So um, really look after yourselves when you can um, by scheduling in that that relaxation and yoga or that reading or the creative time, those things, those hobbies and interests that you really enjoy. So um, some take home messages from today. Um, so please try and find some time to release some of the stress from your bucket to lighten the load. Put yourself into your life first rather than leaving yourself to the end when everything else is done. Identify whether or not you're in a boom and bust cycle and schedule a balance of activities um, such as routine, necessary and pleasurable activities and find creative ways to rejuvenate and sharpen yourself. And remember that exercise is just as effective as medication for improving mood. So um, we'd like to um, hear from you a bit about what you are going to have a go at. So choose 
one of these ideas from today's webinar that you will action over the next week. So we're going to put the options into the question and answer. So if you just click the thumbs up next to the relevant option and like it, then we know that's the one you're going to choose and that's the one you want to do. Whilst you do that, I want to highlight the, the rest of the information in our pack. So um, if you want to try out that five areas model to try and understand a bit more about your vicious cycles, you can use this and it has a few prompts um, to kind of help you fill it out. Um, so have a go at that. And um, also to let you know, we are having um, two more sessions um, as part of this webinar series. Um, next Thursday and the following Thursday. And um, so we have coping with burnout and stress, um, which is kind of more anxiety focused for those of you that are struggling with symptoms of anxiety. Um, and then we're going to be looking at sleep as well um, the following week. And if you haven't already signed up to that, then please use this link. Go to this link here, which we'll copy and paste into the question and answer, and you will be able to register for those um, events there. If um, you notice that you you might be feeling really distressed and overwhelmed by some of the things that you've witnessed or experienced in the past months and those experiences may be still impacting you now. So you may notice that you're having flashbacks or nightmares and it may feel like you're right back there reliving it all over again. And you may feel like or notice that you're having uncontrollable thoughts about the event. This is a normal reaction to really traumatic experiences and these symptoms can last for a few weeks. However, if it has been a few months since that traumatic event and you're still experiencing some of these symptoms, um, then it's important for you to seek help. And these symptoms are easily treated with the right help. So if you feel like you need further support, um, IAPT Psychological Therapy Services are available and free if you feel like you need more help. Um, so they are able to offer help for post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, anxiety, and you can find them by using this link um, or going to uh, the IAPT NHS website and typing in your postcode, it will find your local IAPT service. And um, so do that if you feel that that would be useful. If you feel like you need urgent help um, for your mood, if you're having thoughts of suicide or of harming yourself, then please talk to someone. And these services are fantastic. So we have the Samaritans, as we mentioned earlier, we have the wellbeing support line that the NHS and Samaritans have worked together to create for you. Um, we also have Shout, um, text them on 85258. Um, it's a crisis text support line um, that are available 24 seven. If you're not sure what help you need, then um, you can find some guidance um, on the NHS website um, and it's under urgent support guidance. We have some other useful, use, useful resources available for you as well, and um, some specifically for NHS staff. Um, so NHS England and NHS Improvement are offering NHS free staff access um, to psychological and practical support. Um, there is a helpline, um, a tech service, an online portal and a bereavement and loss support line. So um, use these links and um, you'll be able to find those support online or via telephone as well. So coming to the end of our webinar today, we really would like some feedback from you and um, to hear your thoughts about this webinar. So we're going to put this link into the question and answer for you to follow and to um, to have a go at letting us know what you have found, how you found today's webinar. Um, and you can do this whilst we're spending a bit of time at the end answering some questions. Um, so if you have a question, um, please type it into the question and answer now and we'll come to those in just a few moments. Um, and as I said, please um, spend a bit of time um, leaving the feedback and asking questions and we'll come to that in a few moments. And um, so thank you. Um, that's the end of our webinar today. I hope it's been useful and um, we'll spend the rest of the webinar time 
um, going through some of your questions and um, and you can also um, answer the feedback as well. So let's have a look and see what you would like to ask today. OK, um, so here's a question from earlier. Um, what should I do if I find I'm exhausted from work that I just go straight to sleep and don't have any energy to do anything else? So um, I touched on this a few moments ago, but um, this is really common and I've experienced this a lot myself. <laughs> um, naturally, we're doing a really difficult draining work and we may be on our feet all day as well. And so we are going to feel exhausted, um, but um, it is really important that we do some of these things. And the reason for this is because um, if we kind of crash when we get home, I, I know from my experience, I find that as soon as I sit down um, and kind of give in to that feeling, I then am out for the rest of the evening because it's really hard to build that motivation to get going again. Um, and we might feel like we've got no energy left. So um, what we can do is rather than, you know, crashing when we get home, it's to plan in a few things that are energy creating um, and refreshing. Um, so things like doing a little bit of exercise, um, because that can create energy um, r rather than take it away from us. And, um, you know, things you know, doing some yoga, which doesn't take a lot of energy, but can really be restorative to the body and mind. Um, but also, you know, if you really find that you're exhausted and you can't do much, um, rather than going to sleep, um, do things that are quite relaxing, but kind of give you that sense of meaning and purpose. So um, reading a book or listening to music in your bath or um you know, spending time with your partner. It's really important that you don't just go straight to bed because otherwise um, life will start to feel really empty and the, your motivation to do things will dwindle even more. Hopefully that's helped. Um, it may be rearranging things around. Um, so if you find that you have more energy in the morning, it's scheduling things earlier, especially if you're going to bed earlier. Um, so yeah, just some ideas there for you. Let's see if you have any more questions. I have so many other things to get on with, like tidying up the house, and I feel guilty if I leave it in a mess and do something for myself instead. Any top tips to help? Yes. So <laughs> again, this this is common, and it's natural to feel this way. Um, if we are finding that we are putting these things off for something personal, we can feel really guilty about that. But it's important to remind ourselves that if we don't look after ourselves, then we will have no energy left or motivation left to do those things. And those things will pile up higher and higher. And um, so it's coming back to that sharpening the saw analogy. It may feel counterproductive to take time out for ourselves. It may feel like a waste of time when we could be spending that time doing something else that we need to do. Um, so it's remembering that um, it's that routine and necessary things are often the things that we prioritise and we can um, neglect those things that um, are for us because we feel guilty about doing them. Um, but it's reminding ourselves that actually by doing this, by looking after myself, I'll have more to give to those other things. Um, and that's often the case, just like with um, sharpening the saw, it feels like it's a waste of time, but actually if we neglect to do that over time, that cutting the wood is gonna be exhausting and draining and take a lot more time than if we actually took a break, sharpen the saw and then get back to it, we're much more efficient. So we need to take breaks, we need to fuel our body properly and we need to rest um, in a, um, a, a way that rejuvenates us and gives us meaning as well. Hopefully that answered that question too. Um, so I'll see if there are any more. Um, I suppose the other thing for that last question about um, feeling guilty and prioritising the things that feel more important in next week's webinar, we are going to be talking a bit about that. 
Um, so come along to next week and hopefully you'll learn a bit more about managing that um, fe that feeling of being overwhelmed as well. So um, that's all I believe from today's webinar. I'll just check one more time to see if there are any more questions. And I think that's it. Um, I hope you found today helpful and we look forward to seeing you in our next session next week. Take care. Bye.